continue. Okay, we are now calling the meeting to order. Um, and our first task is an appointment of a secretary for the meeting and Ted has already volunteered. So that's good. So we're passed with that already. Um, just a quick recap, the things we're doing at this meeting, we're gonna review and approve the meetings from the July 23rd meeting, which was the last time we met. Wow, August, September, October, November, five months ago. Uh, project update, um, talk about the friends group and timeline for planning it. Public comment, other items not anticipated. And there's a couple of little things there and then set our next meeting date. So first, July 23rd minutes. Very nicely written by Jack. Um, and I don't know if anybody's had a chance to look at them or sees any issues or problems or anything with them. Anybody, any comments before we vote on whether to approve them? No comments. All those in favor of approving the minutes from July 23rd, why don't we, instead of doing a roll call, just raise your hand or thumbs up or something like that. And Brenda's not allowed to vote, so she didn't raise her hand. She's such a good citizen. Um, so it looks like it was unanimous of all the committee members who are here. So we have approved the minutes. So I got an email from Dave today, um, project update. I don't know if anyone's been by the site recently. It's sort of, you know, something's happening, but it's kind of sad looking. <laughs> so a lot of dirt. Here's, here's project updates. So far, the contractor has screened approximately 5,000 cubic yards of fill currently stockpiled in North Amherst. They have hauled and graded 1,325 cubic yards of fill to the site. Valiant, who I assume is, I think is the contractor, has also installed a riprap tracking pad off Old Belchertown Road into the site, a little driveway kind of, so the construction vehicles can go from the road onto the site. Um, and it says, weather conditions created wet soils and fill and have prevented slash delayed or shortened many days of hauling or screening. As soon as conditions warrant in the spring, they plan to haul the remaining fill to the site and grade it out. So it sounds like things are sort of shut down till the spring. Site conditions at Ruxton and the dog park became too saturated towards the end of the season. They did their best to prevent ponding and further soil saturation before shutting down operations for the winter. The contractor has continued to turn in submittals for approval as far as materials, in other words, pea stone and sand. DPW will continue to work with the contractor during the winter to order all remaining materials, benches, fencing, shade structures, etc. Whether permitting, challenge in the spring will be getting started as early as possible to avoid the active period of the grasshopper sparrow. <laughs> So, so let's all keep our thoughts for a uh, dry early spring, which would be totally against the pattern of what we've seen the last couple of years. So yeah, Ted, unmute yourself. Thank you. When's the spring nesting season theoretically beginning? I think they talk about like, end of June or mid, mid to end June. So there's, you know, if they can really start doing stuff in early May, there's a shot at being done before. I believe it might be mid July, Jim, just FYI. Uh -huh. I feel like last year, mid June was when they sort of were talking about if it hadn't started by then they couldn't start. But I think you're right, though, that it's July is when the actual nesting happens. Yeah, because they're not even sure that they will nest there. So I think if, it, if they do, then it's mid-July, but they might not. Right. And I don't think any were ever cited this past summer, which isn't unusual. They don't necessarily expect them to be there. So um, that's Question. the... Yeah. So uh, from your photos, did, did they take down the, the chain link fencing? along between the sidewalk and, and the actual landfill. It looked like um, it was, was there ever chain link fencing there. There wasn't chain link fencing there. 
There was never well, any fencing there. There was restricted access, I thought. Okay. All right. You're well, thinking of over on the towards Route 9 where the driveway is. Yeah, where the gate is. Okay. So yeah. there was never any fencing. There was there. never any fencing. No. I couldn't remember that. But Yeah. Hi, huh. Dave. <clears throat> Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. yes. Sorry, I was having trouble with the link. I was it was not letting me in on my on my phone. I forgot my computer at the office. Probably Angela's fault. No, okay. it's probably put that my in the fault. minutes, Ted. <laughs> probably my fault. Um, yeah, so I just finished reading your project updates. Okay. So um I'm gonna actually jump ahead because Dave also in his email sent um, task force to do, you know, his thoughts on what are the things that need to be happening now and over the winter and one continue to fundraise, but we'll talk about that in a little bit when we talk about the friends group and move forward with the friends group. Um, select color for shade structures. I think everybody should have gotten an email today with a, a PDF that has colors for the shade structures and for the steel tubing components. And then um, we're gonna be reviewing bench choices and colors. We don't have those choices yet, but they're gonna be provided by DPW. So I'm sure at our next meeting, we'll be talking about that. And then we'll be working with Dave to finalize design commitment for the welcoming kiosk. So let's, let's talk about color for the shade structures because that's sort of something entertaining to talk about. Um, did everybody, first of all, get that email with the attachment and look at the colors? Um, and I should say Jack, not Jack, Mike couldn't be here, but I, I told him I would take his vote if he wanted. And he said he wanted bright and cheery colors, whatever that means. Ted? I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> at the last meeting or one of the last meetings, I think we all agreed that we wanted to coordinate as much as possible all the various structures that are going to have some kind of a color. And, you know, what I see so far is a blue water fountain, there's a green doggy waste stops. And then we have a choice of colors on the shade structures and we don't know what the roof of the kiosk color options might be. And I think that in order to choose the shade structure, we probably mm -hmm. need to think about all the other colors at the same time. So is there any way, Dave, that we can get a, I think it's a, a metal roof that we're planning to put on the kiosk. Is there a, a brand or type, or can we get somebody to tell us what colors those roofs might be? Because that might go a long way to our decision-making regarding the sale. And, and, you know, in terms of making them coordinate, not just be a hodgepodge or clash. Oh, hang on a second. Dave, Dave's you're muted. muted. You're muted, Dave. I haven't thought about this in a while. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it might be a chicken and egg thing. I mean, if, if you guys like you know, I, I think I think the roof color might be easier than the shade 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 sails and to some degree because I don't think the roof is going to be like kind of a custom color. Um, so I, I, I imagine we can match the roof to just about anything, but um, I hear you on maybe I mean we could we could hold on that. So we've got waste green. I know why they chose green because our other ones in Amherst are green. Mm -hmm. That's the only color they come in. I think. Yeah, water, the water fountains blue, I think, because blue symbolizes, you know, water. Um, so we've got the shade sails. And then we've got the roof of the roof of uh, the kiosk. And then there's both the shades, uh, shade as well as the posts, right? Right. Yeah. Um, I don't have an answer on that. Um, we certainly could hold, I don't think there's any, I don't even think the blue water, I mean, if you guys wanted to change the blue water uh, uh, feature to something else, we probably could. I doubt it's been ordered yet. Yeah, I can, um, it does come in green if we wanna match the green. Mm -hmm. 
See, I, I think that it would be easy enough to just ask Barry Roberts, what metal roofs do you like to use? You know, what are the best ones and get a spec sheet on the roofs so we can see that their green, if we decide to go with green, is, isn't going to clash with the other greens and everything's going to work together mm -hmm. rather than selecting ordering and then looking at the roofs and saying, well, we, that's not really going to look that good together. I think mm -hmm. it would be useful tonight to just us decide together what family of color we're interested in or think would be best for the site. Do we want you know, a green or brown to blend with the landscape or do we want, as that person who commented, I don't know who it was, Mike. do we want something that stands out that's bright and you know, cheery or whatever the comment was? Um, yeah, per that personally, sounds I think it should blend in. That sounds great. A family of colors. That sounds great. We did that for the uh, spray park down at uh, spray park and the playground down at uh, Grove Park. And we, I think we chose, uh, we wanted to stay away from like primary colors. Uh, this was, we really wanted it to kind of blend in. So it's some tans and some browns. And, and I think there may be a, some sort of a rust colored roof. I can't remember the, the color of the roof of the, of the, um, of the uh, structure down there. But yeah, I like that, Ted, the family. Why doesn't the group discuss a family of colors? And then I could go back out and get the spec sheets for the uh, kiosk of the roof. And then next meeting, we could kind of compare all of this. I, I think I'll hold, I'll, I'll, if I can hold on the ordering of the water feature, the water uh, yeah. fountain, we'll, we'll hold on that until you guys pick the whole suite of colors. I kind of hope that we'd go with the high school colors. I was thinking crimson and yeah, so that's Maroon. kind of interesting. Maroon. Uh, that, that would be Question. the brand. Clarification. Yeah. Uh, are dogs colorblind? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I should know that, shouldn't I? You should, Ted. I'm, like, I'm staring at you on the screen, Ted. <laughs> uh, Ellen, you think they're colorblind? I thought they could see I thought some. they were. I thought they I were th like grays, blacks. They can see muted colors. Yeah. Well, I'll get back to you on that, but they, <laughs> okay. have, well, they, they, they have the apparatus to see some color, I think, you know, but that, no one's asked me that in the exam rooms uh, in the last 10 years. So <laughs> those they things kind of just it. slip your mind. Yeah, I don't think they see the colors we see. Somebody Google it. I just okay. did. So dogs <laughs> have two color receptors. Um, most humans have three. So yes. dogs can discern blue and yellow. There you go. Yeah. So not that it matters for this purpose. Um, Clearly but critical at this time. I know Buddy might not go if he doesn't like the color palette we're using. <laughs> so it's basically, so basically our decision is, are we trying to contrast and go very bright or are we trying to blend in and mute it and either match the other recreation areas in the town or the landscape itself? Those are our two options. Yeah, right. Those are like three options there. Actually. Well, just, okay, so, just, so match, blend or bold. Right. Just, right. To, just because he isn't here and I promised what Mike's exact quote was, I would simply want colors to be bright and happy. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree with with Mike. I think that you know that's one of the things um, that we have a little bit of liberty to do is to make this exciting and and bright. So I'm I'm on team bright colors for this one. Huh. Hi. I, oh, yeah. I, go ahead. Um, it might be nice to do like a, a good color scheme where there is like one main bright color and then we so like that can be accents and then the rest can be blendy in. Do we have, is the signage going to be colored as well? I mean, has that been decided or does that play into this? It plays in in that, yes, we get, we'll get to decide that, that as well. That's a good point though. We should put that on the list, you know, but that's really easy to match. I yeah. would, I would offer a roof that is, is natural and doesn't require painting because looking at, you know, chip paint, that needs, you know, to be tended to. Well, no, is these not are a pleasant these thing, are but. fabric structures. So the fabrics come. Well, in I these thought we were talking about the uh, the kiosk. Oh, it's probably going to be a metal roof. Yeah, we might have a say in that one. Yeah, so one of the metal roofs that just, you know, is doesn't degrade, you know, yeah. in twenty years because we don't want. They have that a very long warranty on metal roofs. 
they yeah. they last forever. Yeah. It looks like you can get the dog water fountain in uh, eighteen different colors. Right. Mm. So, I I sort of came into this thinking just on my own, oh, you know, we should try and get, you know, the sail color, which is going to be the most prominent thing that you say, oh, we should get something that blends in, maybe the river gum green or something. But I've, I'm easily swayed and I'm sort of leaning towards something bright and bold also. I, I'm coming, I feel like I live in the neighborhood um, and not that that really matters, but I pass by there a lot. And, you know, it's a pretty beautiful natural area, even though it's a dump um, or was a dump. Uh, when the grass is in, in the summer and there's trees around, there's a pond over there. And I'm a fan of natural conservation areas that sort of blend in with the environment and don't stick out like a, a sore thumb on the landscape. It could still be very attractive, you know, in its own right. So I think I haven't, I'm not familiar with what went on at Groff Park, but it sounds like they were thinking along those lines, not to have it primary colors. And that's a children's playground, their area there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, that's my, that's I coming into it with that, but I, I'm like, Dave, I could be swayed and if everybody wanted to go bright and whatever, I'm sure it'd be fine, you know, but that was just the way I'm looking at it, that if it were either tan, the blend in or a green, a dark green to blend in with the grass and the green roof or, or, or even in the brown family, you could do, you know, a brown roof on the kiosk or maroon. Even that is less, I think the primary colors, you know, makes it look like a playground a little bit. And maybe that's fun. And that's what people are saying that they do want it to look like a playground. So, yeah, Jack. So Ted finally got to my color, maroon. Uh, yeah. But who, it's, I, I second whoever said, you know, the, the Amherst high colors, you know, just keep it simple. And maroon is pretty subdued. So which is closest to maroon there, the terracotta or the brick red? I thought probably the d brick red because terracotta tends to... But I thought it was a nice nod uh -huh. to the high school. The brick red, the brick red is the most like the high school, I think. Uh -huh. And it's not just the high school. I mean, the town uses that. Yeah, the town colors. Yeah. Uh -huh. the town uses yep. that. Yeah. And um, my what, internet's unstable, so I'm just. I'm sorry, we, you froze a little. Try again, Brenda. I think she was telling us that her internet is unstable. Ah, uh, so she uh, might. Okay. What would a good post color be, do you think, to go with, say, that brick red thing? Would that be a coffee brown or the crimson red? I think it depends on how far you want to take the motif of maroon and white. Um, if you wanted to do white posts with the, with the red-ish, maroon-ish um, hmm. sale. But I, I don't know if I'd put a, I definitely wouldn't put a different red in. Yeah. The white and red would look nice together. I mean, they would, and you could there. You could do a maroon roof on the kiosk, uh, and that would, you know, that would look like a town. The town colors, right? Maroon and white. Uh huh. Is that what it is? I haven't looked at this logo recently. But. Yeah, that's what the high yeah. school is anyway. Yeah. It's the town too. I don't know. Does the town officially have town colors? I meant more like when they got their masks and stuff. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. So so the alpine white post and the, the brick red roof. The only consideration is those are also UMass's colors. So just to keep that in mind as well, if we're okay with that, that's fine. But UMass uses those too. Coincidentally. <laughs> sure. Will the white stay white or will it get all scuffed up and marked? I wonder if the latte tan would be a better. I mean, it does say that it's it's all um, powder coated and durable. I mean, it's going to have some yellow on it, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, 
Could we do like purple and white and allow mammoths to come to the dog park or something like that? I think it's a great idea. All in. <laughs> the large dog, the large area. The large, the extra large yeah. area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that is a, is a point that we're going to have two shade structures and there's no, no rule that says they have to be the same color. That's true. Just to complicate our lives even more. Mm. Maybe why don't we pick one and then decide if we want to make the second one a different color. Just, just a thought. Let's let's pick one for the first structure and then go on to the fact that there's if two. If we if we do brick red, will people get it that it's really maroon, or will they? It's hard to tell from this little square. Swatch. Yeah, is I, I'm I'm guessing they would supply swatches. You know the company, which would be better to choose from. You know, or easier maybe. I don't know how it would work on Zoom, but. But even even if it's different than seeing it there in the field and seeing what it looks like, yeah, you know, I think brick brick red is the closest to maroon because we wouldn't want that grape purple thing. Mm -mm. That would be a no. mistake. No, I think too. If you're going to pick two colors, they should be in the same family. So, yeah. like silver gray and light blue, or um, stormy gray and silver gray. Yeah. I agree. What's in the brick red family? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Unless the bamboo brown, you know. Right. Bamboo yeah. Brown. Oh, yeah. I um I think we have a lot of elements at play that adding too many colors when we're using a color that it like I think if we were gonna make everything different, we'd have to go with the like that playground look of you know bright yellow, bright orange, bright blue. But I think because we're settling for the brick red, I feel like it might look better to have the two structures be the same and then have that like a white or a, or a black, like a contrasting, um, either white or black is kind of where my brain is going for the other, for the posts. Because we also, I mean, we don't know for sure what color roof we can get on the gazebo. And we still need to think about the, the yeah. wall and the trash. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think the what uh, Dave suggested is that we just sort of, at least come up with a preliminary uh, preference for a color family, you know, mm -hmm. the primary colors versus the colors we're looking at versus the natural scape. And what, you know, we'll, I guess, take a vote at some point, right, uh, Jim, to see. Yeah. That. So, yeah. We don't have to choose the actual things now, but we can say we, we've, we're leaning toward the brick red with something we want to see the roofs and um that might go with it to see how it's all going to look together before we decide right yeah are we kind of all in agreement that we're leaning towards the brick red and probably the alpine white for the post so we've got our maroon and white theme do we i suppose we could vote that that's the way we're leaning just to make it more official and get it in the minutes so i'm not I'm, a fan of the white posts but what was that I'm not, not convinced. The white post. Yeah, I'm not either. I, I I agree. I mean, things white things tend not to stay all that white. They get dirty, you know. And uh, also, I think bright white posts like that are really going to stand out when you just walk, come up to the site. You're going to see these big. They're I don't know how tall they are, but they're going to be pretty tall, aren't they? They're going to be pretty tall. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. I think so, that latte tan might go good with the red. Yeah, so I was thinking latte tan or the gunmetal gray seemed to me to be the two. Yeah, yeah. That would like that. Sort of disappear a little more. Yeah, I think so. Anyone have a strong preference for one of those or for something else? I, I'm willing to check in with um, Joanna and Chip Gaines as well. <laughs> I like the gunmetal gray. I prefer that to the to the tan. Yeah. I'm not sure everybody got my HGTV. I got it. It was there. good. <laughs> Very topical, Dave. Well done. <laughs> um, okay, so brick red sails, gunmetal gray posts. So. Yep. I'll, I'll make them. I move that we 
vote that are how do I phrase this that our sensibility at this time is for brick red sails and gunmetal gray posts to be yeah. confirmed for sure at a later date. How's that sound? Yeah, that would give us flexibility also like a like the roof could match the gray. Yeah. Potentially. We don't have to have everything that, that, that you know match exactly. The gray is an easy thing to, you know, as a good roof color. So Jim, so, that was that was brick red sails and what was the what were the posts? Gunmetal gray posts. Maroon and gray is kind of a classic combo, isn't it? Classic. Yeah, my college colors. Very yeah. good. <laughs> you can also get the water fountain in um, river rock granite or quicksilver if you want gray, or they have firehouse red, but that looks like it might be really red. That's going to be really red. Yeah. yeah. The gray might look nice with the stones and everything. You know, there's going to be a lot of gravel, yeah. gray gravel. So if, okay. we, if we carry these over to next meeting and we have more cut sheets and whatnot for the other ones, you guys could make, you know, you could kind of make a decision on the whole suite of, of colors for each one of these. Good. Sure. So why don't we actually, why don't we skip the vote, but just put it in the minutes that the, the sort of consensus of everybody is for brick red sails and gunmetal gray posts at this point in time but Got we don't it. need to officially vote on it because an official vote on something that's not official is sort of silly. Okay. That was fun though. Um, Can I ask a question? Sorry. Yeah. I, um, and this is not to open a can of worms and I'm sorry if I'm doing it. How come we get to make this decision and it doesn't have to go to design review board? Hmm. Good question. Possibly um, we propose it and design review review board would have to approve it. To approve I don't know. It. I don't yeah, know. I will check on that. The project already got approval from right. DRB, but we it's been a long time. So we might have said, oh, when we get the color scheme, we will come back to you. So that's a good yeah, question. I remember, I just I knew that they they had questions specifically about our yeah. signage when we went before them. And so yeah um yeah yeah okay. it would be whether we're whether we legally have to or not it's a great idea to do and and you know if we say we're picking the town and school colors you know how dare they say no to that anyway so <laughs> but yeah you know if we were going with canary yellow sails and teal posts they might actually hey, have an objection i would love that <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's a good question though. I will check in with the staff to the DRB. Okay, now that was, thanks for bringing that up on it. That was actually good. No problem. Um, so the, I think the last thing to talk about is the friends group and what do we wanna do in terms of timing and organizing um, and I, in my mind, I think we've discussed this in my mind, sort of the steps that have to happen, you know, first of all, the theory is while the dog park is being designed and construction and constructed, we've got this thing called the dog park task force, but at the point in time or around the point in time when the dog park actually exists, there'd be kind of a handoff The task force would dissolve you know, retreat into the sunset and this friends group would take over the, the responsibility of, you know, keeping track of things and maintenance and fundraising when needed and things like that. Um, and I know our concept was that the kickoff would be sort of a big publicity event to try and get a critical mass of people to come to a meeting, whether it's virtual or real, whatever it is, where we would have facilitators, and I know both Anna and Brenda have talked about being willing to be involved in this, to work with this group of people to determine exactly what the friends group will be, what its bylaws will look like, what its responsibilities will be. So the big question is, what's the best timing to do this? And I know personally, I've always felt that 
you sort of want to have a clear vision of what the dog park is going to look like and when it's going to be done, you know, so people can start to get excited about it. So as it's nearing completion, we're building this group so that the group is ready when the dog park is completed. You know, we now see this delay where they're going to hopefully pick things up and get going again in the spring, but even that's not 100% sure, it's weather related. So we're again dealing with this question of, is it too soon to try and gather people for the friends group? And should we wait until the spring to do it or should we do it now? And I'll open that up to discussion. Hi, Gina, by the way. <laughs> kind of curious. Oh, go ahead, Jack, sorry. No, <clears throat> who was talking? I'm sorry. Sorry, that was Brenda, <laughs> but go ahead, Jack. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, well, just, uh, Jim, you know, I, I presented to you this option for this 501c3 that through the Pioneer Valley Regional Ventures Center, so we can have this charitable kind of uh, entity that could funnel donations and it would be have the tax benefits. And, you know, similar to what we asked for Kestrel, uh -huh. but I'm not 100% sure because they haven't got back to me. Yeah, uh -huh. but I see that as a minor aspect of it. You know how people donate money, the mechanics of it. Sure, it's important. Do we want to do something? The tax benefits are pretty sketchy, questionable anyway. At this point, yeah, yeah. So, so I see that as a secondary issue, and the primary issue is just the timing of organizing this group. You know what what will work best. So it seems like with what you've said about the uh, them starting up in the spring, so realistically, if they can start by May, let's say by the time things dry out, April or May, and they have a month or two to do the grading and construction, so June, July, realistically, we're not going to be getting close to uh, completion before August. Dave, would that be like the earliest that you could see it opening? Um, I actually think they can get started on the work earlier. I mean, it is weather dependent, but um, all of the 90% of the material is already, um, what do you call it, uh, screened uh -huh. and is, is ready to go on site. So um, I think it's going to go pretty quickly from there. Really, it's the fence, is the water lines, um, sprinklers. Not a lot of there's not a lot of moving parts to this yeah. thing. Um, but I think the real issue, Ted, to, to your question is when are we open? When are we ready to open relative to the grass being ready to receive visitors? I think that's always we've talked about that in the past. That's always the the challenge. Yeah, well, we were going to, I think, open, but fence off the grassed areas and just use the gravel as kind of like a soft opening, mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. to get people on site, see the kiosk, see what's there and get excited and, you know, have enough impetus to get a friends group going. But I agree mm -hmm. with Jim that, you know, trying to raise a friends group now doesn't make a lot of sense because there's nothing there really to speak of. It's all virtual also, uh, we, mm -hmm. you know, we, there's a lot of unknowns, but it's possible by June, mostly everybody may be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if that happens, that's gonna change everything, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of the success and drawing people in to get, uh, you know, become affiliated with a organization again, because, you know, Zoom organizations, yeah. just not that much fun, right? So. I think I, waiting I say, till yeah. construction is further un underway and whether that's, you know, May, April, May, June, that seems like a time frame to go out when things are really happening. And I think the key thing, and again, when you talk, if you're gonna talk to Barry, I think if we build that kiosk, you know, get the, the concrete in there and build the kiosk early on versus later, that's gonna help a lot with fundraising because that's where we're going to be putting, you know, uh, people's names and stuff. And if if that's under construction or built earlier rather than later, 
I think it will help with, you know, building excitement for, to donate and become involved with the dog park versus just a lot of dirt that's pushed around and some fencing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we could talk to him about when he thinks he can get in in the spring and build a kiosk. Yeah, a lot of that, it's, it's more having to do with the contractor, I think, than, than Barry, because mm -hmm. all of that is going to be built around the parking and the sidewalk there. So I think I can talk to Jason Skeel, the town engineer, about how that's all coordinated. But it, it's, yeah, it's going to be a orchestrated between, you know, again, which comes first, the kiosk or the, or the uh, bituminous pavement. Do you pave and, and do, um, I forgot, uh, the sleeves? And then you, typically you do the paving, you leave a sleeve or your core, and then you put in the, um, the, the post for the kiosk. But I, I don't know enough about this design yeah. to really know how that this goes. One, it's gonna be in concrete actually. So it's outside the paving. It's in the part of the concrete, poured concrete, uh, the foundation, as I recall. And the, it's part of the entrance concrete. Mm -hmm. And Anna had her hand up a little while ago, so. Uh, so I had actually drafted out a proposed timeline for this in addition to the mission statement for the friends group um, that I'd be happy to share if folks are interested in seeing it. Yes. Um, yeah. okay. can, while you're doing that, Anna, yeah. can I add one thing that of course. we are really, we are really going to be pressing to get going on site as early as possible because the more we can get done before the grasshopper sparrow season uh, is upon us again, the better because you know we don't want to be shut down by the natural heritage program. So we've got to get the site. The big things, you know, we've got to get the site all graded. We've got to get the fence up. We've got to get the bulk of the construction done in you know the interior construction done before the the grasshopper sparrow season. If we're working out near the street, we're going to kind of build our way back out. I would imagine the any of the concrete work, any of the bituminous pavement work, that would be last. And as long as we're working out on the street, I think that'll be fine. But I just wanted to throw that out there that we, we really need to rock in the spring to, to get done as much as we can before the sparrow season. So um, we're looking down at the bottom of this document, which I think you all should still have access to. Um, and I just adjusted it as you were talking to reflect maybe not really moving until, um, you know, it's mostly done with, we're mostly done with construction. But um, I thought this might be helpful in terms of thinking through the different steps that we may need to take. And then we can uh -huh. oh, finish. This is great. Um, yeah, that's so, good. so starting now through June or whenever we decide to, to kind of, kickstart the process, we would be finalizing the working mission and goals for the Friends of group, start to think about, you know, um, crafting the, the initial emails to reach out. We talked about reaching out to folks who had applied to be on the task force. We talked about reaching out to the folks on our mailing list. Okay. Um, and then in the summer of 2021, uh, we would solicit self nominations for members. We would ideally, if it's possible, post this on the town website, uh, post it on our website, but then also do some press releases in the Amherst Indy, in the Gazette, um, and and then potentially at local. I'll add in some, you know, local businesses like um, Valley Vet and etc. Uh, and then also in July, that that's when we would start to collect those names and select this first. Um, I guess, cohort of, of members. Um, and then they will, will, that's when that turnover will start to happen. Um, they will elect their initial executive board. Um, Brenda and I would get to work in August and September with the support of the rest of the task force to work on the strategic planning process and development of bylaws. And then we'd officially turn it over to them in September. Um, so this can be pushed forward and back. The time crunches right now, the one that feels a little long for me is the first one, just, but if we wanna wait till construction's done, then that's, that's fine. The one that feels short to me is the timing of the strategic planning process. Um, that is an extremely short time to conduct a strategic planning process with a volunteer board. So um, I just am aware of that being a, a big crunch, but this is, um, this is my draft. So happy to hear, th hear thoughts on it. So if I could just jump in. I think, you know, in South Hadley, they just opened their dog park recently and Jeff Squires uh, is hosting that friends group. So it might be useful to bring him in and have a conversation with them, I was thinking. 
I know I checked that out and his, it's actually uh, registered to his house, uh, which probably isn't a good idea. Um, uh, so, but it might be a, a useful conversation to have with Jeff just to see, you know, what some lessons learned might be. I agree with you, Anna, a strategic planning process is not possible in that short amount of time, but if we have a mission and a vision, then we can at least do a little bit of a, uh, you know, because of the first year is really building support among the community. But it may be that we may be able to push off a, a full strategic planning process until a little later, because it will take a little time for the organization to gel. Yeah, and it may be that they we don't necessarily need to be the folks responsible for that either. Um, you know, as they get started, they may want to do it on their own as their own process. Um, yeah, and the bylaws are pretty standard. We could go from other friends groups. So um, I think you know there'll some be some things that we'd want to work with the town on just to make sure we've got them right for Amherst. But you know, it's not something that we have to develop on our own. We can yeah. really, you know, build on what's been done previously. But great timeline, Anna. Yeah, really Anna. good. It's Anna, thank you. Um, you should change Hadley to South Hadley, though. Oh, sorry. I thought it was Hadley. Yeah. yeah. Thank South you. Hadley. All right, great. Um, maybe if you could send that portion to in an email to folks to the task force group. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm happy to send the whole doc again, but you just want the timeline. Send the whole doc again. Okay, great. So it has a make sure it has a date on it, so we know it's the latest version. It's always the latest version when it's a Google Doc, Jim. Okay. <laughs> um. So, is there anything else we need to do now regarding friends group? Or is it kind of on hold to look at again at our next meeting and see what has to happen? Well, one of the things we could do is to just gather some missions from some other friends groups. Uh huh. And that might be helpful, you know, because in terms of dogs, friends groups, I think we probably have a probably finite number. Um, and mine are barking outside right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think we could probably gather and um, edit from others and that might be really helpful and kind of shave some time, but it's nice to start from something rather than have to craft it. So um, yeah. at the last meeting, that is that is what I did in, in drafting out the first one. So I will try to find the links that I um, used in, in, the, in creating that draft mission um, and I'll put them in the doc as well so folks can, can look there too. Good. Thanks, Anna. I'm trying to think. I... Okay, so um, so maybe at the next meeting we can discuss the mission, you know, as one of the focus things to to kind of decide and, and start beginning to discuss that mission because that will kind of move us along. Don't you think? Yes, I'm look. I'm looking for a link to the Google Doc. I'm must have... um, I'll send it again. Oh, good. I'm sure I have it somewhere. Don't have it yet. Yeah, I just want to get that in front of me again so I can see. Is there anything else we need to do now or basically are we all set till our next meeting? I mean, it might be nice now to kind of divvy up how we're how we're doing the, um, the outreach. If there are folks who want to reach out to the folks from South Hadley, um, folks who want to start to add to the document from other areas, um, might be helpful just to kind of not a sign, but um, have ha just make sure we're all clear on what would be helpful to do before the next meeting. Uh huh. And we can all do it. It's just, yeah. No, it would be better if it was a little better coordinated. I'm um, so. Did you send? Oh, hang on. Here we go. Thank you. It just, got, just got two at once.
Brenda, did you say you had contact with the person from South Hadley? Would you be interested in reaching out to them? Oh, sure. Our kids were on climbing team together. Oh, cute. I love it. So then for other folks, I'll add a page at the bottom of the doc where we can start to collect mission statements from other friends of groups. Um, and then we'll just note if they are like what the group is so that, you know, the ones that are dog parks um, might be more relevant or more helpful. Good, that sounds good. Um, okay, so anything else that we want people to sort of volunteer to do at this point, or should we just figure out what our next meeting date is and go from there, which sounds like it shouldn't, shouldn't be too long. Maybe, I don't know if we need a meeting in January or February is enough. And the question there kind of for Dave is when do we need more firm decisions on colors of things? Um, why don't I check with the town engineer on that, Jim, and then we, you and I can communicate and then you could do a doodle poll. It might be third week of January, something like that. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, that way we kind of link in with him. I, I, you know, if need be, I might even ask him to attend the next meeting and, you know, if there are any questions for him, you know, people could ask him directly. Uh huh. And for sure, if you get information on bench choices and colors, you can send them out so people can have them in advance, just like you did mm -hmm. with the sales. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think, so everyone should now have the link if they didn't have it before to honest document. And I think we can be all done for now. Hey, Anna, and I copied you on the email to Jeff. Oh, great. Thank you. Good. Anybody else have any? So we're not going to set a next meeting date. I'll send a doodle poll once I hear from Dave. And, you know, my guess it'll be either towards the end of January or sometime in February. One of those two. Not sure which. Anybody else have anything or we think we're all done? I think we're all done. All those in favor, first of all, thanks for coming. It's nice to see you all. It's been a while for a lot of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, and you know, my only message to everybody is hang in there. We'll get through this and get a dog park eventually. It's exciting um, to see some changes there though. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jim, if I could, you know, there's a lot of parallels between this project and the um, the Groff Park, you know, spray park and, and playground. But I will tell you, when we opened that place, it was it was cranking. People, you know, people are using it today. I mean, uh -huh. it's pretty amazing and, and exciting and inspiring when you when you actually open these things that you worked so many years on. So we're we're gonna get there. Um, it just these these infrastructure projects take time. So we're, we're gonna get there, we're gonna open it yeah. and people are gonna love it, no doubt about it. Awesome. No one saw the pandemic coming, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna blame it on that. Okay, so um, all those in favor of adjourning, probably just raise your hands and if it looks unanimous, I think we're good. And it looks unanimous. So I think we are adjourned. Thank Great. you everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Stay safe.